Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is what exactly a Nash equilibrium is. I cover this in Lesson 1.3 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Lesson 1.3 covers Nash equilibrium generally, and so it's a really important chapter, and that's why we're going to be spending so much time in the videos talking about what's in that particular lesson. If you want to learn more about the book, check the video description. Anyway, on to the content. The formal definition, as we saw in last video, is that a Nash equilibrium is a set of strategies, one for each player, such that no player has incentive to change his or her strategy given what the other players are doing. Now, in specific, we were looking at pure strategy Nash equilibrium, and that's when players are not randomizing between two or more strategies. So in the stag hunt, that was both players definitely go to uh, hunt a stag, or they both definitely go to hunt a hare. It's not like they're flipping a coin before they go into this hunting range and hunting a stag on heads and hunting a hare on tails. The alternative to this is something called mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, which we'll talk about in a couple of videos from now. However, for the moment, when we're talking about Nash equilibrium, it's going to help to actually understand what the heck that definition means. And so one way of interpreting this is that a Nash equilibrium is a law that no one would want to break, even in the absence of an effective police force. So take a new world, pretend that the police doesn't exist in this world, but the government passes a law. The law is a Nash equilibrium if everyone would want to follow it, despite the fact that this police force just doesn't exist. So for an example of this, think about traffic. In some situations, following stoplights is a Nash equilibrium. Suppose two cars are driving at each other from perpendicular directions. The stoplight is red for one and green for the other. If the police could not ticket the drivers because they don't exist, would these drivers want to break the law that says the driver who has the green light is supposed to go and the driver with the red light is supposed to stop? Well, the answer is no. And we can look at this by taking this sort of information and translating it into a payoff matrix that looks like this. So you have player one, player two. Both of them can either choose between going and stopping. If they both go, they cause a car crash because they're going to crash into each other. And that's worth negative five for both of them. So that's very bad. If they both stop, then they're just wasting time because no one is going. And so that's slightly bad for each of them. They both get negative one in that case. It's better than getting into a car crash, but still it's a waste of time. And in the other two cases, if one goes and the other one stops, the one who goes get a payoff of one because that means that person is getting to his or her destination as quickly as he or she can, and the other person just gets a zero because they are sitting and waiting for a moment, but not a long time if they both stopped or in getting into a car accident and getting this worst possible outcome. So those are the payoffs right there. And I want to look to see if this is a Nash equilibrium. Is it a Nash equilibrium for player one to go and player two to stop? The answer is yes. Why is that the case? Well, think about player two's possible deviation. She could switch from stopping to going, but if player one is going, that means if she switches from stopping to going, she's going to cause a car accident, and that's really bad for her, so she doesn't want to change her strategy. And likewise, player one wouldn't want to change his strategy either. If player two is stopping, if he goes, then he gets to go to his final destination as quickly as possible, whereas if he stops, they're just wasting everyone's time. So player one would not want to change his strategy either, which means this is a pure strategy Nash equilibrium where player one chooses go and player two chooses stop. Likewise, this is a Nash equilibrium as well, where player one stops and player two goes. Why is that? Well, we can do the same thing we did before. If player one would to, were to switch from stopping to going, then he causes a car accident and gets a negative five. So of course he's going to want to stop in that situation. And likewise, player two is getting to her final destination as quickly as possible. So switching from going to stopping doesn't make sense for her. So she gets a negative one. If she switches, that's worse than just keeping her strategy and getting one, which means that's a Nash equilibrium. This Nash equilibrium is where player one stops and player two goes. Now, these other two possibilities can't be Nash equilibria, because if they were both going, that would cause a car accident. Either one of them could switch to stopping, and that would ensure that they get a payoff of zero, which is better than causing this serious car accident. Likewise, if both are stopping, that doesn't make much sense. One could just go and do better, because they get to drive off to their final destination as quickly as possible. So that leaves us with just two pure strategy Nash equilibria where one player stops and the other one goes. And the reason that the stoplight is an enforceable law here is because it tells one of them to go and one of them to stop. So if player one is getting the green light, that's the equivalent of this sort of equilibrium right here, where player one sees the green light and knows that he's supposed to go, and player two knows that she's supposed to stop. And so given that, neither one of them is going to change his or her strategy, and so then you end up getting a Nash equilibrium based off of what the stoplight told them to do. They are following the law, not because the law is enforceable by police officers, but because it's in their own self-interest to follow the law. And likewise, it's the same, same story down here when player two gets the green light and player one gets the red light. They don't want to switch their strategies, not because of a police force, but because they don't want to cause a car accident or just waste time stopping and waiting for the other guy.
So to wrap things up, once again, Nash equilibrium intuitively is just a law that no one would want to break, even in the absence of an effective police force. So that wraps up this explanation of Nash equilibrium. In the next video, we are going to look at how to find best responses. And that's a really handy way of finding pure strategy Nash equilibria in games that are far more complicated than just these two by two games that we've been looking at for the most part so far. So that wraps up this video. Join me in the next video. Take care.